So our big question is, how do we evaluate? A triple integral. Luckily, if you're okay with the double integral and how we evaluate the double integral, evaluating the triple integral is going to be the exact same procedure, I should say very, very similar, with a little bit more of, of a complication when it comes to non-rectangular domains. Um, but we'll start with the easiest type of domains, which is the, the rectangular domain. So we'll say, we'll start with, A rectangular domain and the notation for this is very very similar to our previous notation omega is equal to say the interval from a to b across the integral from c to d and the interval from e to f say A rectangular domain is the easiest way of evaluating the triple integral. Non-rectangular domains are more complicated, but we'll, we'll start with the, the basic rectangular domain first, and then move into uh, non-rectangular domains in the next lecture. So this is the region, say, from A to B in X, the region from C to D in Y, and the region, say, from E to F in Z. This is going to correspond to depth integral over a region omega in 3D, which looks like this. So the triple integral over the region omega for this function of three variables. is the same thing as the triple integral over the region omega dv is d dz dy dx. And the way that we evaluate this integral is by considering the iterated integrals again. For a rectangular domain, x is going from a to b, which is a constant to a constant. y is going from c to d, which is a constant to a constant. And z is going from e to f, which is a constant to a constant. So we can break this up into three separate integral procedures. Just like we did for the double integral only. The double integral we only had two separate integration procedures. We had an inner integral and an outer integral for the double integral. For the triple integral we have an outer integral or an outer iterated integral. We have a middle integral.
and we have an inner integral. So uh, just like before, where when we determine the bounds, when you determine the bound, which is kind of like step one of doing an integral, you have to move from the outside in. And we'll see that uh, that's a very important procedure when we get to not integrating over non-rectangular regions in 3D. You have to determine the bounds by going from the outside in. But when you evaluate the integral, so that's step two, you move from the inside out. The idea is you do the inner integral first. That's going to be, in, in this example, or in this order of integration, it'll be the z integral first. And then once you do that integral, you'll obtain a function of x and y. z goes away because it's a definite integral. So the z is going to go away when you, once you evaluate the inner integral. So you do the inner integral first, which is just the z integral. Then you do the middle integral of that result, which will make the y go away in this in this order of integration, because uh, it's a definite integral with respect to y. And uh, then lastly, after those first two integrals, you do the, the the final integral, the outer integral, which is the integral with respect to x. And the number that you get, the value that you get after doing that, is the triple integral of that function over the region. So we'll see that for non-rectangular domains, this becomes, um, you know, you have, you have to be very careful, just like we did before. But um, we'll see that Fubini's theorem still holds. Uh, we can still switch the order of integration in any order of integration that we want. And that'll that'll be covered in the next lecture. So let, let's end though with at least one example, one or two examples of the, the the triple integral over a rectangular region. So we'll start by considering the the following triple integral. We'll do the triple integral of the function x y z is equal to We'll just take a relatively simple function, we'll do y times sine of z over find the triple integral of this function over the domain, which is a rectangular domain from for x from zero or for, for we'll do z from zero to pi over six x from negative two to three y from zero to one so the, the rectangular prism uh, for, for x from negative 2 to 3, y from 0 to 1, and z from 0 to pi over 6. So the triple integral over this region omega of this function is going to be the iterated integral of y sine of z x here is going from negative 2 to 3. As x goes from negative 2 to 3, y is going from 0 to 1. And z is going from 0 to pi over 6. So we break this up and do the inner integral first. The inner integral is going to be the antiderivative of sine y times sine of z with respect to z. And the antiderivative of y sine of z is going to be negative y cosine of z. 
evaluated from pi over 6 to 0. is the integral from negative 2 to 3, the integral from 0 to 1. And this is going to be, when we plug in here, you'll get negative y cosine of pi over 6, and you'll get minus negative y cosine of 0. So when you plug in here, that ends up becoming positive y cosine of 0, which is just 1 y times 1 minus y times cosine of pi over 6. And that's our inner integral. So we just evaluated the inner, the inner integral right here. This is the same thing as y times 1 minus cosine of pi over 6. Cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. So this is y times 1 minus the square root of 3 over 2. So this is just constant. So this is the same thing as using our property 1, we can factor out the constant. 1 minus square root of 3 over 2. And just focus then on the double integral from negative 2 to 3, from 0 to 1 of y dy dx. This is equal to 1 minus the square root of 3 over 2 times the integral from negative 2 to 3 of well, the integral of y from uh, 0 to 1 with respect to y. This is the middle integral now. This is going to be equal to y squared over 2, because that's the antiderivative of the function y from 1 to 0, which just becomes 1 half minus 0, or 1 half. We can factor that out. This will become then one half times one minus the square root of three over two, which is the same thing as two minus the square root of three over two times the integral from negative two to three of one, which is two minus the square root of three over four, Antiderivative of 1 is just x from 3 to negative 2. So our final answer is going to be 2 minus the square root of 3 over 4 times 3 minus negative 2, or 5. So it's 5 fourths times 2 minus the square root of 3. This value is exactly the triple integral of the function that we started with, or the accumulation of that function inside this rectangular domain. If you'd want to figure out the average value of this function over the domain, you'd have to figure out um, the volume of the domain. In this case, the triple integral of the constant function 1. Or the triple integral from negative 2 to 3. Um, 0 to 1, and from 0 to pi over 6 of 1, the z 
dy dx, which uh, you can I, I recommend you do on your own. It's even simpler than the integral that we just did. The idea, though, is that this ends up becoming exactly at pi over 6 minus 0 times 1 minus 0 times 3 minus negative 2, or 5 pi over 6. That's the volume of this region, because it's a rectangular region, so it's just the length times the width times the height of this uh, rectangular prism. So from our average value formula, then, you can use this for the average value of the function. If you want to find that, the average value of this function is going to be on the region is going to be given by this 5 fourths times 2 minus root 3, which is the accumulation of the function, divided by 5 pi over 6, which is the total size of the region. So the average value of this function is going to be exactly 3 times 2 minus square root of 3 over 2. Pi. This is, shows you how to apply that, that formula that we went over before, the average value of the function. So you could also apply the mean value theorem here as well. You can use this idea to calculate the maximum value and the minimum value of that integral. But this function is simple enough that we can actually just calculate the integral. We did so. Um, but it's, it's nice to kind of see that uh, be applied. We'll do one more example. We'll do the uh, triple integral, say, over the rectangular region from 0 to pi, 0 to pi, and 0 to pi of the function cosine of u plus v plus w dw dv du, which is just in, uh, you know, not x, y, z variables, but we'll show that, you know, you can use uh, really whatever variables you want to use here. And this will be kind of an important idea when we start talking about integration in multiple uh, different coordinate systems in the next lecture. Let's say we want to take this integral right here. Well, our inner integral here is this first integral with respect to w. So we need to do this integral first with respect to w. So this, uh, the value of this integral, the entire integral, will be integral from 0 to pi, 0 to pi, and then the antiderivative of cosine of u plus v plus w with respect to w is going to be sine of u plus v plus w. This is evaluated from w equals pi to w equals 0. So this will be the double integral of sine of u plus v plus pi minus sine of u plus v plus 0, which is just sine of u plus v, dv du, which is the same thing as the double integral I believe we can do all, so you could split it up into two parts. I think the easiest way for me uh, to do this um, and not write too many steps, um, to not overwhelm me with the number of steps, is just, well, the antiderivative, this, this integral right here is going to be with respect to a v. So the middle integral here is this integral with respect to v.
which is going to be the antiderivative of this function, which will be sine of, or uh, not sine, but the antiderivative of sine is going to be negative cosine. So we negative cosine of u plus v plus pi. That will be minus negative sine of u plus v. So it has to be evaluated for v from pi to 0. Negative, not negative sine, negative cosine. So it's the integral from 0 to pi of negative cosine of u plus v plus pi plus cosine of u plus v. This has to be evaluated from pi to zero. Which is going to be negative cosine of u plus pi plus v, pi plus pi plus cosine of u plus pi, that'll be minus negative cosine of u plus zero, which is maybe u plus pi, plus cosine of u plus zero, which is cosine of u. It's this in entire integral, so it's the integral with respect to u. This will be the integral from 0 to pi of negative cosine of u plus 2 pi plus 2 times cosine of u plus pi minus cosine of u. du which is going to be equal to antiderivative of cosine of u plus 2 pi is going to be sine of u plus 2 pi and you have a negative sign right there so that has to stay there Antiderivative of cosine of u plus pi is going to be sine of u plus pi. And the antiderivative of cosine of u is going to be sine of u. Evaluated from pi to zero. And so finally, to get this value, this will be, we plug in. We'll get negative sine of pi plus 2 pi, or sine of 3 pi, plus 2 times sine of 2 pi, minus sine of pi. This will be minus sine of 0, negative sine of 0 plus 2 pi, which is 2 pi, plus 2 times sine of 0 plus pi, but sine of pi minus sine of 0. And sine of 3 pi is 0, sine of 2 pi is 0, sine of pi is 0, sine of 2 pi is 0, sine of pi is 0, sine of 0 is 0, so this definite integral is going to be zero, which means the accumulation of this function 
cosine of u plus v plus w inside the, the rectangular prism from 0 to pi along x, 0 to pi along y, and 0 to pi along, along uh, z, this triple integral, this accumulation, is 0. I mean, the total amount of positiveness of the function kind of cancels out the total amount of negativeness of the function. Now this is a, an interesting example because you can actually see this if you say do a, a density plot of this function. Right? Uh, same thing with uh, the 2D functions as well. If the, the double integral or the, the single variable integral is zero, the double integral is zero, the triple integral is zero, it means that the, the total amount of positiveness of the function cancels out the total amount of negativeness of the function. So there's a net accumulation of zero. So here I just wanted to show a visualization of the Riemann sums converging for this integral. And uh, you'll remember that uh, we showed that the triple integral of cosine of, in this case, x plus y plus z dv, this is over the, uh, the region omega, or omega is this uh, rectangle from 0 to pi in x, 0 to pi in y, and 0 to pi in z, uh, we showed that this is equal to 0. And sure enough, there are even suns. As we get larger and larger and larger, the number of different rectangles that we use to approximate this uh, is directly converting to 0. And you can very clearly see why. It's that on this region, the total amount of positive value of the function is equal to the total amount of negative value of the function which is why the accumulation is zero. So if this were, say, a charge density function, you could think of this as saying that the total charge of this region is zero because the total amount of positive charge is equal to the to total amount of negative charge in this three-dimensional region. So viewing a plot of this function, we can clearly see that uh, this function, this is the, the function cosine of x plus y plus z, uh, it has uh, level, level surfaces which are planes const of constant value when you look at the level surfaces of this function. This is here the x-axis from 0 to pi over to pi, uh, the y-axis here from 0 to pi, and the z-axis from 0 to pi. This is the, the, the axis right here. So the origin is right here. This is the x-axis, the y-axis, and then the z-axis. And uh, I've done uh, so, uh, one of our, our density plots, so one of our plotting methods. This is using my, my custom Python code. Um, and this basically takes uh, a large number of points. I have uh, 50 points along the x-axis, the, 50 points along the y-axis and 50 points along the z-axis. Uh, so uh, it's going to be 50 cubed. That's how many points are plotted here. And um, basically I've colored the function of each individual point to be the, the value of the function. So the value of this function cosine of u plus v plus w. I guess the x is u, y is v, and z is w. So the value of the cosine function is indicated by color at every point where uh, red, dark red is 1, dark blue is negative 1, and the range of values in between are the range and values of that function. So you see very clearly that this function, you know, it starts here at 0, the origin, at 1, and as you move away from the origin, the function gets closer and closer and closer to negative 1, and then as you move around in the domain, you get further and further away from negative, negative 1, back to positive 1, and then as you get to the point 1, 1, 1, not 1 and 1, but uh, pi, 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 you get closer and closer and closer to negative 1. Again, um, that would correspond to, at this point, it would be 
the function would be cosine of pi plus pi plus pi or cosine of 3 pi. Um, so the idea here is though that you see that even though it's a three-dimensional domain, the function has uh, you know, a, an equal amount, it looks like in 3D, of negative values and positive values. And this is why that the double integral of this, or the triple integral of this function over this region ends up being zero, because the total amount of accumulation of the function in this region is zero. The, the total positive accumulation of the function cancels out uh, the total negative amount of accumulation, resulting in a net value of zero for the net accumulation in the region. Um, so this is a really nice example, both uh, because it's a relatively simple triple integral to calculate, but also because we can visualize it like this and really see you know, what it means for the triple integral of a function to be zero. Um, and the, the same uh, interpretation also works for a uh, double integral as well. But um, so th th that will conclude the lecture for today, though. This example is the last thing I wanted to show in the lecture today. Um, thank you very much for tuning in and listening, uh, and I hope you had a great day.